Greetings, my name is Tony Silva. Today we're going to be talking about the principles of hand rearing. When we hand rear, um, most people use a commercial formula. There are lots of powdered formulas that you only add water. But what I find uh, is that it does not provide sufficient fat for a lot of parrot species, particularly golden conures, hawkheads, most of the macaws, and some of the Amazon. So we supplement the fat with some peanut butter you can use. Peanut butter, cashew butter, you can use almost any of the butter. So what we do is we add roughly about one uh, teaspoonful per cup of water. Ideally, you want to use distilled water if you are in suspect water areas. Many, many areas have water that contains high levels of, of uh, compounds that really aren't harmful to humans, but they can be harmful to a very uh, small baby parrot that is immunosuppressing and not develop their immune system. Uh, so what, uh, if you can, you use bottled water. If you come from an area where the tap water is good, you use tap water. You then, uh, you first add your peanut butter to your water and then you can either use hot water or you can do what I do which is I nuke it, I microwave it. And the idea is you need to get it to 40 degrees Celsius which is roughly 104 degrees Fahrenheit. At that level you stimulate feeding. Uh, when you microwave food you need to be sure that the temperature is correct. We use uh, an uh, that we that we direct the food. So uh, what we do is we stir because food will that's been microwave will continue to get warm for a few seconds after it's been removed out. The idea is we want to dissolve the peanut butter. We don't want any lumps. In it. Once we get it to the dissolved state, we check the temperature. If it's a little bit too warm, we stir until we get it to 40 degrees Celsius or what we do is we can nuke it a little bit more until we get to the right temperature. Again, it is imperative that you not only uh, stir it very well, but that you wait a few seconds. So we warm the water, uh, we will then add the powdered uh, hand rearing formula. Again, there's lots of different brands. Some of them are available in the U.S., some are not. Um, some are available only in European markets, some are available only in some in South American markets. What you don't ever want to do is this to check temperature or this to check temperature. It's not reliable. Uh, and the reason I can state that it's not reliable is my dad owned a restaurant when I was a kid and the cook used to be able to reach in with his fingers and fat, and cooking fat. While things were being fried and he would turn them with his fingers. Obviously, he, his tolerance for a very high temperature was greater than, than mine would be. So we're going to feed a couple of chicks and we're going to go through the process. This is a baby dusky conure. And there are lots of tools you can use for hand rearing. You can use uh, a kibage needle, you can use a syringe, or you can use a spoon. We like to use a spoon because it stimulates natural feeding. As the spoon touches the sides um, of the upper mandible, which are pressure points, they're soft in New World parrots, they are um, calcified in Old World um, uh, parrots, it stimulates and induces the feeding response. This brings about a natural feeding. So you continue to feed until the baby's crop is full. You then wipe it. You don't need to use water. And then you look at the baby's crop. Always keep the head high because if the head is below the crop, the baby can, can aspirate, which means they will absorb food into the lungs and perish. Older birds, such as the cockatoo, we can feed with a gavage needle. Now, a garbage needle should be blunted, it could be stainless steel, it could be rubber, um, it could be um, made out of other products. The idea is that you withdraw food into the syringe, you go from the right hand side, and you put it into the crop, you don't push, and you retain, you, you, you 
hold the head slightly just so that the chick can't pump or can't jump and you don't bruise the internal cup. It's very quick, it's efficient, um, and it produces uh, excellent results for large numbers of chicks. Now, I always like to um, feed chicks from a spoon even when they've been garbage fed. As you can see here, they still retain the feeding response to the spoon. So that should that chick uh, become ill at a later stage in life, you can take medication, add it to a formula, and feed it from a spoon. It's less stressful than having to towel the bird and then force it to eat um, some, some medication. So. It's a very simple process. Now, I like to keep chicks on shavings, and we use soft pine shavings um, because they're natural, they're highly absorbent, um, and they're, they're, they give and take, so they allow the, 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 the shavings to, to conform to the baby's body should it rest on its side or should it hunker down. Um, some chicks will eat uh, shavings, and that's a problem, especially with some of the macaws. You can use many things. You can use uh, even shredded newspaper, as in this case for this military macaw. So that's it for today. It's some very basic information. Um, hopefully you can put it to good use. Until next time, thank you.